So in addition to the content descriptors and the associated um, assessment standards or achievement standards and the scope and sequencing of those, we also need to incorporate the core concepts. And indeed, these may be even more important than the content descriptors. So there's a range of these core concepts, but there are three key, key most important ones, um, which are the thinking skills, the three main thinking skills. Computational thinking, systems thinking, and design thinking. So the other core concepts are still important, and you need to ensure that they are developed. But you need to have a particular focus on those three thinking skills, of which for digital technologies, systems thinking and computational thinking are by far the most important. So, you need to develop your understanding of what computational thinking means. Now, it is unfortunately in flux, it's still in development, what the actual definition of computational thinking will eventually be. But essentially, the um, Australian curriculum has taken a fairly practical approach to defining um, computational thinking as a set of skills that assist in the problem solving process. So understand, understanding computational thinking is an important part of being a digital technologies teacher. It sets the, the really high level thinking skills that you want students to be aiming towards achieving. Now, of course, you need to be able to understand that yourself. Um, I encourage you to have a look at Seymour Papert's uh, book, um, Mindstorms. It really framed the understanding of the computing curriculum um, well before we even had a computing curriculum. So it really does set in place the foundational knowledge of where computer education has gone over the last 50 years. But there are other aspects that you need to consider. Um, Professor Wing reintroduced the concept of computational thinking very much around a tertiary perspective that it has been adopted in the development of, of um, curriculum in um, school education and it very much framed computational thinking around a set of skills that were primarily developed from computer education, com from computer science. So those that studied computer science would have a certain set of skills that allowed them to think about the world in a way differently to those studying other disciplines other than computer science didn't have an understanding of how to view the world. Now an example I give around this is um, word processing. Now when I did my undergraduate degree one of my subjects we had to actually write a word processor from scratch. Um, we had to code it so we had to teach ourselves how to um, tag various um, words such as making them bold, very much like HTML does, but that's how a word processor actually works. But also how to do spread, uh, spell checking and a whole range of other things. But in doing so, I developed an understanding of how a word processor actually works from a fundamental level, from a coding level. Now throughout my career I've taught computer education with business teachers. And business teachers have often been teaching applications. And one of the applications is word processing. So they knew a particular word processing tool far better than I did. They knew all the thousands of different um, menu options and how to make it do all of these wonderful things. But they didn't understand how the actual word processing software worked. So they would come up with problems, or well, they would have problems, such as a particular formatting problem, that they just couldn't understand how to fix. They had no conceptualization or framework in which to actually address it as a problem. Whereas myself, I'd learned how an actual word processor was programmed. So I could understand, okay, this is happening because this has happened. And I could solve their problem. Even though my level of experience with that application was only a tiny fraction of their level of experience. I had an understanding of computational thinking that they didn't. That's what we want to instill with our students, an understanding of how technology works at a fundamental level. Now, it doesn't mean they're all going to go and become computer programmers, but 
they will have sufficient understanding of computer programming so that they can understand where software works and where it doesn't, where things are going right and where they're going wrong, what opportunities exist and what areas can't be achieved by computing. So that's the framework of computational thinking. Now we have other thinking skills though. Systems thinking is about seeing how the world works in terms of systems. And a big part of that is increasing complexity, where we in include more and more systems within our understanding of what's happening so that we can better understanding, have a better understanding of what's involved. This is very different to a computational thinking approach, which often involves decomposition, breaking down problems into simpler and simpler aspects so that we can understand them in more and more uh, detail. Very much opposite ways of thinking about a particular problem. From a computational thinking approach, you would break it down into simpler elements that you can then solve individually. From a systems thinking approach, you make it more and more complex by incorporating more and more systems to see how the interactions between those systems are having an impact upon the problem. And then we have design thinking, which involves a design process where we think about it from a user perspective, um, we think about it from a whole range of different possible solutions, and a range of other elements of design thinking that we incorporate into our thinking processes. So these are the various approaches to thinking that we want to instill in our students and have them practice and develop their capacity to think about the world, to think about problems from these different thinking skill perspectives. And then we have a range of other core concepts around um, futures thinking and looking at the world from the perspective of a preferred future. And there's a whole range of skills around uh, futures to future thinking development and uh, predictions and trend analysis and so forth that we can explore with students around thinking skills related to futures. Then there's a whole lot of skills around um, entrepreneurial thinking and ways of thinking as an entrepreneur. Then there's also a whole range of management type um, skills around project management and teamwork and, and so forth that you would often find in a course related to business management and business leadership. A whole range of thinking skills that students studying those aspects and thinking at it, thinking around problems from a business manager perspective will think about things quite differently to someone thinking about it from a perspective of a user, from a design thinking perspective, or from a systems thinking perspective. So these various perspectives on problems allow students to attack these problems from different approaches. So that's the aspect of thinking skills that we're developing as part of digital technologies. And you will need to incorporate students' development of these thinking approaches in your um, digital technologies scopes and sequencing.